So um, our group research is uh, basically a follow-on from the um, popular event of the Trump and Hillary uh, campaign within the social networks. That's, that's, um, Did we say, ooh, Trump? Yeah, so basically um, <laughs> what we'd like to do basically is just follow on from that, um, those events, looking at um, the kind of uh, social network activity surrounding those political conversations. But uh, we, we wanted to also uh, take the opportunity and, and um, compare that with uh, the recent election that had happened, uh, which is the Cambodian uh, 36 year election. So every 36 year, uh, there, there's a, a new election on, and that uh, started basically um, headlining a lot of news and all that in the last couple of months. And it's kind of died down that by now. So, um, but we still like to look at that conversation and, and look at the comparison through um, scraping of the data. So, what we, um, so what the team did was basically to uh, scrape that kind of data. We created a bot. Um, and we scraped to uh, about four data sets. So we wanted to uh, scrape conversations uh, relating to uh, Donald Trump and his opposition and uh, make sentiment valuations on that. And on the other side, comparison, uh, in Cambodia, we uh, scraped data sets on the current elected leader, who is, whose name is Hun Sen, and his opposition at the moment, well, his only opposition currently is uh, San Ranzi. And we liked, uh, through that data scraping, um, we basically built a network out of it and uh, looked deeper into the conversation and try to figure out uh, what is, is going on within that network. So if you can just yep. go to the next. Yep. Right. Um, so we created a, a network graph using Jeffy we, and we came up with uh, this graph here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's a fairly strange looking graph, but um, as you can see, there's like a uh, central eye in the middle there. You've got uh, at the top, so you've got this little um, black, like it's like a, almost like a, a small pupil there. Um, not sure if I can use this. Can you see? Yeah, so just here. Um, this is, uh, there's somewhere in here, there's a central node um, which is basically uh, uh, the Trump, and that's all the null, that's all the null tweets that are uh, that all the users that haven't showed their location. That's like connecting there. Um, this big cloud here we have worked out is um, basically all the tweets that have a rep a Republican leaning. Um, they basically are very strongly supportive of Trump, and then this big cloud here is basically all the users that are putting out tweets that are very strongly supportive of the, the Democrats, uh, particularly um, Chuck Schumer, which is the uh, Democratic leader of the Senate in the USA. So, um, which was the curious thing we noticed when we were looking, like, looking through the tweets there, they're basically um, very, a lot of the tweets are very strongly partisan. They're very, uh, very strongly for Trump. And then these tweets over here are like this, cloud of tweets just here are very uh, anti, very anti-Trump, so that was a curious pattern, but there's, you can definitely see um, the, uh, how the tweets sort of uh, clumped together based on their um, partisanship. Yeah, so that's yeah, one of the Jeffy graphs we're going to talk about in our presentation. Yeah, we've got, we've got some more for the Cambodian election, but we'll, yeah, that will... Okay, just be considerate of the time. Yes. Because so how long was that? Uh, you have seven minutes yes. in total. Yeah, so we've got another graph to show you. So uh, it's kind of, it'd be easier to go to the next graph. So we had another graph as well uh, with the Cambodian comparison. You can see that the scraping is much cleaner there because um, it, we're very limited on resources. So it's, quickly we realised um, it was okay for the Cambodian campaign and those election and conversations there, it's kind of um, subversive. There's not much activity going on. Um, a lot of um, reservations and people uh, and freedom of speech going on there. We can tell by the location nodes there on the red, the red dot. You can just tell the locations. There are null locations, which ones are growing. And the green, uh, the green glows are the user, um, and not the user nodes. And, um, but when it comes to the American campaign, basically, it was just a whole bunch of mess. So we limited on basically resources. Just, uh, this one took us 30 days, while the American campaign uh, 
we, we only did that for a few hours before realising our computer hard drive just started yeah. not coping with the amount of data that was coming in. So, yeah, so that was interesting. Yeah. That, so, pretty much, yeah, the Cambodian data we got over 30 days because, I mean, the twi uh, I guess Cambodians use Twitter a lot less or they tweet about the elections a lot less so that we were like, scraping for specific keywords about Cambodia and like, we are only get, getting like, a few... Know, probably a few thousand tweets per day, and like with the USA, I was, it was Jeddah. We got, um, I think, we our data file over two days was over a million tweets. And it was just in, absolutely incredible how much data we were getting. Like the bot was just going crazy with how much data we were generating. So, yeah. So the yeah the Cambodian Cambodian graph is like I think ended up with like 70, 75,000 data points, and the USA one was.